Kevin, have you uh, ever woken up at 2 a.m. feeling anxious or worried? Well, you are not alone. One in four people experience some sort of mental health problems like anxiety or depression every year in the UK. So today, clinical psychologist Julie Smith is here now to share some tips on how to deal with these anxieties. And I feel like we all know what anxiety feels like or we know somebody that's struggling with anxiety. And what's been brilliant about you, you've got your book, you've got your social media platforms where you're really sharing quite practical tips on how to do something about it. Um, so let's go through some of these things. You talk about the ways, simple ways, actually, we make anxiety worse. Uh, yeah, I think there are lots of um, natural urges that anxiety gives us. So, you know, anxiety is when your alarm system's going off, so it's telling you to, you know, get out of there. This situation is not safe, it's not OK, escape as soon as you can. And mm. so it's, it's a normal human response to anxiety. But when we do that, let's say you're in a supermarket and you just, um, you know, you, you feel anxious, so you decide to just, you know, abandon the shopping and get out. When you do that, you never get the chance to experience being in that situation and it going well. And resolving so, it, yeah. yeah so so then it's harder to go back. So, um, you know, escaping the situation and, and not sort of staying there, um, even though it's really easy to say and really mm. hard to do, um, actually kind of maintains anxiety. But also then avoidance as well. So let's say you escape the, the supermarket and then you avoid going back for as long as you can. Yeah. That as well then makes it harder to go back when you eventually need to. So right. avoidance is another thing. You know, it's natural to want to avoid the things that, that make us anxious, but yeah. when we do, the anxiety grows over time. Well, you say comfort. Um... Um, as well. Anxiety is enormously uncomfortable. Um, you also say anxiety can feel like an unwelcome guest that won't leave. Yeah. Um, and so, so is it, it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable? Absolutely. Anxiety is supposed to be uncomfortable. It's there to activate you to to do something to get out of that unsafe situation. And, and so, we, you know, you get that kind of trembling muscles and, um, you know, sweaty palms, all those kind of things. And, and your body is getting you ready to, to get out of that situation. And so um, it feels excruciating at times. And so we know that when we quickly escape the situation, we feel that So, so what's, your, what's the suggestion then, sort of uh, going for it head on? I mean, I, I think, you know, after lockdown and life, I feel you know, slightly more anxious socially, going out, yeah. um, taking those steps out. So uh, should I just confront it head to head? Well, uh, something that happens in therapy is, yes, you do uh, spend time in the situation that makes you anxious, but you won't sort of flood someone with the worst case scenario that could cause sort of panic. You do it piece by piece in a gradual way. So you pick something that feels like a challenge, but something you think you can manage, and then you repeat it over and over again. And the thing that you do every day will become your comfort zone. So you keep repeating it until you build a bit of confidence in that area and then you step a bit further outside the comfort zone and you try that and then you keep doing that until your confidence mm. grows. And so you can gradually tackle anxiety kind of piece by piece. Mm. What about those that wake up? I mean, we've said this earlier on, sort of with night anxiety, you might wake up at two in the morning and it all fires up. Yeah, and there's something about your brain's ability to, to bring up all of your to-do lists and everything you're worried about in the middle of the night, right? And so um, uh, one of the sort of tips I've given online is about how you can create a, what I call a worry list. So you just put a piece of paper and a pen by your bed and when, you know, you wake up in the night and all of these worries are going round and round in your head, instead of thinking, you know, I need to solve this now, you just write it down, just a few mm. words, a bullet point, and that list becomes your worry list. And you promise yourself that you will spend time tomorrow thinking through all of those problems in the light of day when you're more able to problem solve them and do something yeah. about them. Whereas at night, if you're ruminating about them, it's just going to keep you awake. So once you kind of remove them and put them out somewhere, yeah, out then head. you're able to, yeah, focus on going to sleep. And what about everyday anxiety? Just the, just the, and it's relentless sometimes. Yeah, and there are things that we do and we don't realise that can make it worse. So, um, so one of the first things that I would talk to someone about in therapy if they were coming with anxiety is ask them about things like their caffeine intake and how they're sleeping and and those kind of things can um, create so for example you know too much caffeine can create symptoms that feel like anxiety so your heart might start pounding and then you think oh no I'm getting anxious and then and then you trigger off even more anxiety because you're worried about you know panicking and those mm -hmm. sorts of things so you know, going back to the basics can really help so things like reducing caffeine making sure you're getting enough sleep all of those things can really help with that sort of everyday anxiety so, you know, when we talk about on here, the lack of mental health resources uh, that are out there, you went online and tried to help with this. I know it's extremely popular, your social media platforms, showing very practical advice. You demonstrate using 
props, actually, so people can understand, I think. It makes it easier when you can visually see something. Just explain what's in front of you here. Yes, yeah, so um, this is a video I did, actually, to talk about that. You know, we often talk about that figure of one in four people. So one in four people in England, roughly, will experience a mental health problem at some point in any given year. So if you imagine that, that the rice represents the population of the country, mm -hmm. so you've got, um, you know, the, the brown rice represents all those people who are fortunate enough not to experience a mental health problem this year. Mm -hmm. And the wild rise represents the one in four of us who will experience a mental health problem at some point this year, OK? So mm. uh, it's a real good visual way of looking at that one in four, because if you give that a mix, and when you are struggling with your mental health, your mind tells you that you're the only person mm -hmm. dealing with that. Um, but if we take, let's take a pinch, and let's just say that's your family, uh, there's your friends, and your colleagues. And even though you feel like you're the only <laughs> one, you look at that one in four and you see that <laughs> the chances lot, are someone else in your life is struggling as well. Yeah. So you're not the only one. But also, you know, if you're fortunate enough to not be struggling right now, the chances are at some point today, you're going to brush shoulders with someone who is struggling. So always choose kindness and be compassionate about you never really know what people are dealing mm. with. That's, That's very, very good. Very true. Yeah, very um, good. What's the, the, the finger trick that you... Yes. Yeah. People got very worried when I did this online, saying, oh, did you ever get out of the trap? And <laughs> there is a way out. And I'll explain. So this is something that we often explain to people in therapy about dealing with emotions. You know, with a Chinese finger trap, the most natural human response is to pull away, right? But when you do, the trap it tightens... Traps fingers. ..and you can't get out. And it's a, it's a very nice metaphor for thinking about painful emotion, because when you feel something uncomfortable or painful, the most natural human response is to do something, anything, to get out of it and make it go away now. And, and when we pull away from emotion and we try to block it out by, you know, staying busy or, I don't know, eating or drinking, whatever that thing is, uh, it tightens its grip on us because then we have to make our decisions based on what we don't want to feel. Mm. But when we turn towards our feelings and we allow them to be there, it's a bit like pushing your fingers together. And when you do that, the trap loosens and you get this kind of wiggle room. And then you get to choose whether or not you're going to stay with that feeling or whether you get to kind of step away from it without having to fight your way free. So it's this idea that when we try to push emotions away and block them out, it actually tightens its grip on us and, and we kind of get trapped in these vicious cycles. Wow, that's brilliant. Do we need... And we were talking about this earlier on, um, Prince Harry talking about therapy, which is incredibly important, yeah. and, and uh, the little bit of therapy I've had has helped me enormously. It is very hard to find. Um, can we do it ourselves? To what degree, do you, what, what point do you say, I need help here? Uh, yeah, and, and, and I have had to be really clear about the stuff that I put online, actually, that um, it's the educational element of therapy. You can't be sitting in a room with one person developing this very unique, close relationship that allows you to um, really kind of reflect on the things that are going on, going on for you and work through them. And, and it's incredibly powerful for the people that can access it. Um, but also there's this educational side of therapy um, that, that people can access and that I've been trying to kind of make available to people outside of the therapy room. Um, but it's not necessarily a replacement for therapy, it's an insight into some of the things people mm. learn in therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.